Hey, we're back. And today we're going to talk about class A fire ratings on exterior materials. I guess you could use them inside too, if you wanted, but we're kind of going through the whole series of how to protect your home next to fire. fire and, and whether or not you live in Southern California or somewhere else, there's fires everywhere. So how, how, how can you protect your home from it? Use class A fire rating materials. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button, dingle on the bell. And of course, Leave us a message down below. You can always type a comment, a uh, question, anything like that. We're more than happy to help. So with that, let's go ahead and dig into these Class A fire ratings. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about the one-hour fire rating. Okay. For wall assembly. Okay. So I, I touched on this uh, in the last show. After the Great Chicago Fire, it was 1876, I believe, or whatever, 1884. I should know that better, but right. sorry. So after the fire, though, the Chicago adopted building codes that required much different exterior wall ratings because they did not want a fire rampaging. So we today now, even on residential, build with a minimum one hour exterior wall. And I'm going to just quickly run through a number of assemblies that will meet that one hour. OK. The simplest form is two layers of five eighths drywall, one on the outside. Two by four framing, you can have two by four, two by six. It can be wood right. because you're getting the protection from the type X gypsum, which is gypsum and fiberglass mixture on one side. Then you have another on the other side, and that starts doing that. So your framing can be either way. You can do 25 gauge steel studs if you want. The best thing, though, again, we talked earlier was about mineral wool. Right. It Always, you know, a better choice for your, your for doing it. Concrete masonry. So a lot of the buildings in Chicago, especially the newer condos, are all done what we call split face block. So because they're concrete block and they're typically eight inch, they're going to automatically, they're going to meet that eight inch. Now you can fill them with vermiculite, you know, which is flame retardant. Vermiculite's that stuff they give you in the bag for a gas fireplace that glows and flickers. That's vermiculite. It's also uh -huh. insulation. That's what you have, of course, in your block walls for insulation. That's going to do it. Um, steel stud walls with fire resistant board. So you can use 5 8 type X or one or two layers of 5 8 board. Um, it all does basically the same thing. So metal panel systems, you could have you know fire rated panels uh, in most of those systems. And I have on this, my cheat sheet that I came up with, I have the NFPA standards and stuff, but we're not going to get into all that unless you're if you want a copy, put it in the comments. I'll send you these. <laughs> um, EIFS, the exterior insulation and finish system with a fire resistant core. So the EIFS is usually a foam product placed over your framing and so on, but then you use a fiberglass and a stucco base. Right. And, and stucco will do that. These are, see these garage walls? That's all stucco. That's all, all the, the drive at the EFAS system. Those walls are still standing. It's what's happened around it. There's other reasons why that burnt down, but those walls are still why it collapsed. Yeah, where the rest of it is all fallen down. Well, so, and, and that's a great picture because okay, you're right. That's probably a one hour wall. Yep. So as soon as you got to the EFIS, I thought about this picture here. So uh, there you go. Okay. Continue, sir. Sorry to interrupt. No, so those are your wall structures. Basically, it's, we're talking about in residential. Right. We're talking about a frame wall, whether it's wood or metal. And drywall, you know, type X drywall on the outside, type X drywall on the inside, something in the middle to slow it down, like the rock wool insulation. And then your outside, obviously, everybody's going to go, well, I don't really want drywall on the outside of my house. No, you do not. Right. That is your barrier. So from there, you can put up a water-resistant barrier. You can put up a rain screen. And from there, you can put up a number of products. Cedar siding is not one of them. <laughs> so now we're going right into the Class A products. And this okay. comes from the National Fire Protection Association. Okay. Fiber cement siding is probably my favorite that is now... It comes in so many different styles. Yes. And how you can buy it pre-finished. So I get to go, comes in many styles and colors. Yes, it so, does. 
James Hardy is probably the most common known name, but certain teed makes them. And there's some other brands. Uh, and if you've got your cheese sheet out, Ron, you see the Nichiha. Sorry. So, Nichiha. Kazunte. Right. So Nichiha is a, is a product that it's panelized. Okay. So you put that on your wall, you use a base or a starter track and you put these panels on They're large panels. Yep. And you set that one and then you put a couple of holders there and you put end block, you put the next and you build it like blocks. Correct. Fireproof built in rain screen have spacers, the brackets that hold them are spaced off your water resistant barrier. So you have ventilation. Right. Crazy. Yeah. How they built all these things that, you know, we're talking about fire, but you know, water intrusion is a huge problem in homes. Well, this solves that too. Yeah. So it's a great non-combustible fire resistant product. So that's your fiber cement siding. So if you want that look of cedar lap siding, go to concrete. Right. Brick veneer and brick, you know, brick construction and brick veneer. I mean, we do frame houses all the time. You put up your your insulation, you put up your five eighths drywall, you put up your insulation board, you put up a, you know, and then your rain screen, you got airspace and you do brick veneer. Right. Works just fine. Yes. Stucco. Hard to get stucco on fire. That that's you're talking the classic stucco. The yeah. with with a scratch a base coat, scratch coat, and then a finish coat. Yeah. So on a wood frame house, you would do wood frame, your insulation board, your 5 h drywall, and then we use a uh, paper back metal lath, which the paper back is your another vapor barrier, but that's also your rain screen so that when they put the stucco up, it gives it a place to bond, but then you mm -hmm. have space behind. It keeps the, everything kind of loosey-goosey so that you're not trapping moisture. It gives it a place to right. dry. Yeah, a, a drainage plate. Yeah. So stucco, big one. Metal siding, aluminum and steel siding, they can, can, can provide class A fire rating, but you don't really see a lot of steel or, or aluminum siding anymore. Hell, most towns don't even allow it. You know what I mean? Just, you know why? It's because it's a maintenance issue and everybody tries to keep their neighborhoods to be non-maintenance mm -hmm. so that they look good 20 years from now, not yep. just the day you finished it. Right. So... Concrete panel siding, so precast concrete panels, that's, I, I guess that's more like the Nietzsche I was talking about. So anything that's concrete or cementitious right. is obviously going to be flame retardant or less likely to burn. Um, they get into the roofing, clay tile roofing, clay tiles. We use concrete tile here. Um, concrete tiles tend not to burn. <laughs> Again, we talked about metal roofing, slate roofing. Uh, but even ash, asphalt shingles, you know, you get architectural shingles with a class A rating. They'll, they'll hold up to it. They, they, might, they might smolder, but they're not going to outright catch on fire. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them, they, they, they're treated with fire resistant chemicals. Whatever. Um, but yeah, glass fiber reinforced concrete panels. Not really sure what those are. <laughs> so that I think it, those are the the siding panels. I don't know. They're it's fairly popular around here, where they're doing like a board and batten kind of look on the homes. So uh, with that, you you can buy the panels, and it's it's just, it's a fiberglass panel that goes up, and then so is your your uh, your battens are also like a fiberglass piece, and it all just gets shot up like that. So that those panels end up. You know, because it's fiberglass, it's going to be fire retardant. And you're saying those some of those could be class A. I would say just verify that that stuff's class A before you actually install it. Like fire resistant insulated panels. Okay, so we know what SIPs are, you know, structural insulated panels. Sure. Fire resistant, so insulated metal panels, especially when using commercial residential, they're designed to be uh, fire resistant and carry a class A rating. Okay, but where do you really see them? I, the, the only place I see fire rated panels like that would be uh, self storage places. Right. Yeah. That's exactly like corrugated it. steel panels. Right. Okay. Not sure your homeowners association is going to go, oh, sure. We'd love to look at that. <laughs> yeah. So you know, there's things, but yeah, sometimes it's sort your, of your pole barns are going to have that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. uh, horse barns and, you know, storage barns, stuff like that. That's That's probably where you'll find those.
Yeah, and then like on my list, number 12, fire rated wood siding. Um, I'll go with no. Um, it's fire rated. I get it. It has a chemical treatment, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I'm pretty sure if it's 2,000 degrees, the neighbor's house is burning or the bushes next to your house are burning, it's going. So, right. you know, just some common sense. If it's made out of a flammable material, even though somebody put something on it, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, EIFS, we talked about. It. You can do it as a stucco coating, but again, if it gets that hot, what's that styrofoam going to do? It's going to start melting behind the stucco, and then... Or the, Which the smoke could be worse than the fire in that case. I know uh, PVC pipe, right? Yep. Yeah. Makes gas that's toxic. Steel roofing roofing and siding, that's, you know, steel panels, especially standing seam, but, you know, in, in steel siding, again, I don't know anybody's done any steel siding in years. Um, I don't even look for it, but again, that's also because of where I live. Right. And again, that's going to be more of your, you know, your horse barns, your barn dominiums, you know, barn kind of, dominiums, you know, yes. things like that, you know, that that's where you're going to find them. If you're looking for that wood siding, look, well, like I said, you know, brick veneer, depending on where you live, you know, out in California, I would expect to see brick and wood. Yeah. So. I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of brick up to a, you know, a wainscot to the bottom of the windows, right? And you're using tempered glass windows. And then from there up, you're using hardy siding. And then you do a two-tone paint where you make it look more like wood, right? You go over that brown, you hit it with a little bit of black, yeah. right? You can make it look like wood siding. It doesn't have to be a solid color. Right. No soffit vents, small soffits, no eaves or small eaves. But again, no venting, no, no, no vent on your top of your roof, no ridge vent yep. and standing seam actually you can use metal pans they make stamped metal panels that look like tile yeah we use them a lot and there's a number of houses down here that have them i will tell you they don't hold up really well in cat three hurricanes okay but i've seen a lot of those fail doesn't mean they weren't approved for it it always goes back to the install right they pay attention to the way you're building the house and uh, or even doing a remodel. If, if you're going to remodel the home and you're redoing the outside, pick something that's class A. When you go to do your roof, pick something that's class A. And then, that, then you don't need to worry about it. So it, it, it makes a huge difference. And probably, I don't know, I guess, depending on where you live, you could probably even get that certified and have your homeowner's insurance lowered like you did in, in Florida because, yes. because of the way your house is built. So you should have a fire rating for your home in California. Well, and the insurance company is not going to fight you on it. They they want the same thing. They want the business, but they don't they don't want the risk. And if they don't know what their risk is and they can't calculate it, they're not going to take the, take on the business. So, you no, know, they just charge you this. Yeah, or or they just charge you an exorbitant amount of money. Oh, so it's not just fire risk that's causing the issue. Why L A or California is losing insurance companies. It's the stupid laws that says, you know, if the reinsurance company says, I want this much more, but you're not allowed to pass that on to the to the customer, then what's the insurance company supposed to do? Just lose money? It's going to close. Yeah, they're just going to say, nope, but we're going to stop insuring people in California, which is what's happened a lot. And it's happened in Florida. It's happening in Alabama and, and Mississippi and Louisiana. Because those are high risk areas to try and get insurance. It's amazing that for so many years we haven't had major storms, big issues. But all these homes that were built in the 50s and 60s, yeah, they're getting wiped out. And yep. that's pretty much what happened. Like a lot of the stuff in Bel Air, Brentwood, you know, Palisade specific housing. A lot of that was old school housing. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. So I'd say with that, make sure you subscribe on the on the button and dingle on the bell. And uh, of course, leave us a comment, you know, uh, if you think we're right, we're wrong, any of that stuff, or you got a question, well, go ahead and leave the comment below. And with that, I'll say, keep it square and level. Till next week. Until next week, next time.